Oh my goodness. Don't you hate it when YouTubers use the word endgame in their videos so much that it makes you sick? It makes me sick, I can tell you what. Plus, you know, it's so final because once you apply that label, you're kind of locked in, in it. Like what happens when something better comes along and you have to renege on that endgame title, right? Which brings me to this modular mechanical keyboard that doubles as a Stream Deck Lite, the three-year-old Mount Everest Max. This, my friends, is my new endgame keyboard. <laughs> Let me start with the cons first, and the elephant in the room here is the $250 MSRP. And really, there's no way around it. This thing is spendy. You really have to want the features to make this set worthwhile. It's posted all over the internet, guys, on Reddit and on review sites. The Basecamp companion application lacks polish on this thing. It looks the part, I'll tell you what, and has a totally appropriate name. But there's been the occasional crash and application lag here and there that I've experienced. Plus, I'd like to see more updates and feature drops from Everest for the keyboard itself. But really, at this point, I'd rather they just optimize Basecamp itself above all else. All the USB-C ports that you see on all four corners of the keyboards are, unfortunately, proprietarily made for Everest accessories, not your accessories. So thumbs down to that. To me, this is like the Porsche of keyboards or something, for the lack of a better analogy, in terms of build and design. Everything, guys, is solid to the touch. The metal deck, the lack of flex, the high quality components meant to survive longer than even, I don't know, your dog or something. And is relatively easy to upgrade with third party parts as well. And then there's the party trick of the detachable media dock and numpad. With the numpad, you can have it physically attached to the left or right of the keyboard or as a separate unit like this. And there's a quartet of buttons above the number keys that each have a display. And each key is programmable to run things like macros and application shortcuts. And you can even change the icons on the displays themselves, which is pretty cool, I guess. And the media dock, on the other hand, attaches to either the top left or top right of the keyboard. And it also has four buttons that are customizable, though they are preset for media control and another button for navigating the dial menu. And by default, by the way, the large dial with the really nice LED display is used to control volume, but can be used to show other information such as system resources and the time. And here's what I really like. When properly set up, the programmable keys, the dial on these modular pieces mimic a simpler type of control panel like Stream Deck or Loop Deck. With predominantly Cherry MX Reds and also some blues and browns thrown into the mix, I would say typing is clickety enough with fantastic dampening and stabilizers that also minimize rattles and unwanted sounds. But, you know, I'm guessing some of you will probably change it out for something nicer further down the line. But out of the box stock, though, I was able to acclimatize quickly and glide through the keys in no time at all. Speaking of changing it out, customization should be the Mount Everest Max's middle name, I think. Like there's, of course, we just mentioned a second ago, the swappable PCB switches and keys, the endless RGB options with 16.7 million colors by key, a little bit overkill for me, but it's there. The previously mentioned media dock and display keys and the ability to create macros and shortcuts in the Basecamp app. And just look at the cable routing option at the bottom of the keyboard here. Magnetic feet to adjust the height of the keyboard to what you like it, same thing with the numpad and the kind of tools that they supply in the box for you to work on your keyboard. Yeah, Everest definitely thought about quite a lot of things here. Not to be outdone is the awesome unboxing experience. The packaging looks like a cross between a slick collector's edition Nike shoe box complete with an upside down swoosh if you squint a little bit and accessories drawer that you can reuse after the fact. It's really cool. I totally get that keyboards like mice and other interface peripherals are highly personal at the end of the day. I normally prefer mechanicals myself with some added ergo and customization thrown in. I don't like them bare bones. And I've gone through countless keyboards over the years and haven't found one that truly hits the spot. So with the Everest, I wasn't expecting to like it, but the moment I started using it, I knew this was it. 
But yes, it's not cheap. So it's something you have to save up for. And I think if you're a writer, gamer, content creator, or even a keyboard collector, I think this should definitely be part of your shopping list. From, you know, the great typing experience, the customization, that's really what gets it for me. And the build quality and everything. Yeah, this is really awesome. And the fact that this thing is three years old kind of blows my mind sometimes. Well, thank you so much for watching this Mount Everest Max video. I know I'm not perfect. I'm not a keyboard expert by any means, nor do I claim to be, but if if you enjoyed this video, the only way to get more videos like this is if you like this and also subscribe to this channel. There you go. Thank you so much for being here. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, guys, because guess what? If you haven't seen the news, the world needs it more than ever. And it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out and God bless.